Good morning. Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to everybody for this morning's live craft and chat. Louis just come in. He's not quite. Hello, Louis. Hello, big boy. Louis's not sure how he feels about Louis Ken this morning. I had to actually go and get him off the couch. So he may disappear today. He may disappear. So welcome to everybody. The chat started early today. Lots going on. So a couple of housekeeping things. Today is live craft and chat day. So if you, not live, it's that too. It's caffeinated crafters. So if you are a local to Brisbane and you want to come and hang out and have coffee and do craft, you can meet up at the coffee club at the Hyperdome from 6 p.m. onwards and uh, come and hang out and I'm just going to take some craft and, you know, drink coffee and have some dinner and, and anyone who wants to come, I'll see you there. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Oh, Louis plopped down now. He's laid down. Good boy. Good boy. Um, Angela's missing the live because she has shenanigans to get up to. It's her fiance's birthday. And uh, I hope you have an awesome time, Angela. And we'll see you when you comment. You comment in the replay. So I'll make sure I reply back. Um, good morning, early chatters from Leanne. Um, at the broadcast, there we go. Um, here for another Thursday Maths Rock Crochet and Chat. Here's to getting a one or an eight. Will today be the lucky day? I don't know. Yeah, you know what? Like, I was like, I might roll the dice a couple of times just to see if ones or eights actually roll. And then I was like, no, but what if I roll a one or an eight? And that was the only one or eight juice the dice had. And then we never get it on camera. So uh, my superstition brain just totally took over. And I have not, <laughs> not tested the dice again. Um, Claire popped in early. May not be able to join the live much because I will be on a bus trip. Have a fantastic time. That is awesome. I hope you have a fantastic time as well. Lots of members chats here. Um, in this software, all the members chats get the little yellow suns. So um, thank you, thank you. And thank you to Leanne for modding for us today. And... I haven't seen any other mods yet. Doesn't mean they're not there. They're lurking. They're lurking and they will get you. Um, hey, Holly, how are you? Good to see you here. Hello, Kirby. It's been a long time. Welcome to the, welcome back to the chat. Freaky's going to be listening while he spins fiber. Good morning, Lisby. How are you going? Uh, yeah. All right. So, um, because we don't want to waste time. Well, actually... I'm totally going to waste a little bit more time because, because Abby had her 18th birthday on the weekend, which was, you know, fun. Um, and then while she was there, she made arrangements to go and hang out uh, with my cousin for a few days. My cousin, cricket extraordinaire, right? Amazing with what she does for her, uses her cricket for. All sorts of things. She makes signs for her business. She makes, you know, clothes. She does cups. Abby and her made me a cup. And this is dishwasher safe. This has been put on with heat. And I'm just like, oh my God, how amazing is this? It's just perfect. I love it. So I have to drink of water. It also came with two straws. Plastic or stainless steel. I went with plastic today. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why is it the water tastes better out of a Star Wars mug? I don't know. I don't understand the logic. But there we are. Uh, it, yeah, let me know if you can see, see me, if you can hear me, all that kind of stuff. I do have the fan on. I could probably, I could probably turn it off today if I want. Because it's not super hot here today. It's actually really quite lovely. Um, but this room it gets a little stuffy because there's no draft. Not that cricket. Yes, not that kind of cricket. No, 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 no. All right, so let's drop in into our hands down shot here where we're up to with our blanket. Now, for those of you that aren't regular viewers, I know the color is off. We have done this intentionally. This pink, this is pink, believe it or not. It's such a hot, vibrant pink that it makes six different cameras angry right so what we've done is we've, we've reduced it all down just so we could have clarity of stitches i had to choose between like blowout 
or clarity of stitches with the wrong colors, okay? So we went with the wrong colors. So that's why you need to go and follow Fibrific over on Instagram because after every live stream, I take a progress photo and pop it over there. And then I actually also use it, um, I also use it as the thumbnail for next week's live stream. It's become a little thing now. It's become a little thing. So the thumbnail for this live stream was what how this looked all rolled up at the end of last week. Um, that looks so useful too, should last the whole chat. Look, even if it doesn't last the whole chat, because I'm, I'm not sure how many mils it is, I probably should measure it just for curiosity's sake. Even if it doesn't last the whole chat, that's okay, because I've got my standard green one down there as well. Because I do drink a lot of water. I love water. Water is awesome. Water is life. Okay, so we are straight into our dice roll. So we'll get the dice roll happening, and then we'll hit our topic for today. Oh, look, I thought I cleaned all this up. Goodness me, such a grub. Okay, so we'll get the dice roll happening for today. So um, we'll, we'll test all the audio levels, all that sort of thing. And we'll see how we go, okay? Fingers are crossed, everybody, because it is, it is dice roll time. It's dice roll, dice roll. Dice roll. time. Roll the dice to choose the next color. Alrighty. Let's get this first roll in. It's a one! It's a one! Oh my gosh, it's a one! We get to use a colour we haven't used yet and it is total yarn bar. Oh my gosh, check this out. It's got like half a baby hanging out of it. It's I poked the yarn baby back in. That's how bad the yarn bath is. Oh my gosh, we got a one everybody. I'm so I'm sorry. If you if you if this is your first of our live craft and chats, you'll realise that we've been working on this project for this long. And we have not gotten a one. So this is a first time use of this colour. And it was a bit yarn barfy when I pulled it out. And I just don't want to get myself into more trouble here by making it knotty. So I'm just going to clean up just this little bit at least. So that it's in the right order. Glad I checked. That would have been annoying. Um, so today's topic is what do you do? with your yarn scraps. Now I'm not talking about your little cut off ends, you know, I'm talking about your actual, I've done with my project and I may have a ball or two or a half a ball or whatever it is. It's too much just to throw away. Um, and you know, oh, hang on, we nearly, we've nearly cleared this up as best as possible. Um, Yeah, so what do you do with yours? Like, I, I'm going to show you a project that I've just started. And it's like a, it's not really a project, kind of. It only took 10 lives. Yeah, no, I think it was four. I think it was four or five. But it feels like it took a long time. Actually, I better write down a one, but we got a one. Um, it was finally a one. Uh, Artsakh, welcome to the chat. Hey, Francis. Yes, it's definitely worthy of... Definitely worthy of all those things. Oh, I've seen something, you guys. I can't show it to you yet, but I have seen something that we have got game themed humbugs coming and they are adorable. So if you're thinking about buying a humbug, Game Widows is going to hate this, but just hold off for just, just a little second until I can... Till, till the mail arrives where I can show you a game themed humbug that is coming and I'm so excited for it. So um, a, a humbug for those of you that are not in the know is one of these amazing pouches that fits all of the things in it for your projects and Game Widows has made us a game themed one and I was thinking about it and I was thinking you know what my game themed one I'm actually going to store my dice in. Like I've got a lot of dice now and this would be great because you can sort of, you can really open it up and get a good look. So if you're searching for a particular dice, it's going to be really good for that. But also game themed, is it's so cute and adorable. And if you're working on one of these Math Rocks projects, I think everyone should get one. Um, but yeah, we have to wait. We have to wait. Patience is not a virtue of mine that is it is a virtue but it's not a virtue of mine we've got some new comments coming there we go game widow will have some photos up later um francis okay so, so some answers to my question 
which was, I'll just get this started, um, which was, what do you do with your yarn leftovers? So I, I think I wrote scraps, but it probably is more appropriate to call them leftovers, right? Because it's it's not, I'm not talking about like, you know, when we trim off all these ends or, or the end, the bits where we weave in the ends, things like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, you finished a project and you've got half a ball left, you know, like there's only half a ball that's because it's coming from the middle. You know, you've got, or you've, you've made a project that had, you know, 10 balls of yarn and you've got one ball left over. Like, what do you do with all of these sorts of things? And um, I just, I was thinking about it because like what's happening here is there is a particular um crochet style that I want to try for many years I've kind of fallen a little behind in the crochet and yarn trends because I've really only worked with my fiberific yarns and one of the um well fiberific and bendigo was really what I boiled down to but one of the things that I've really noticed since I stopped dyeing yarn and I got out of my little funk I was in a funk for a little while and every now and again the little mood comes back um, when I'm sad that I can't dye yarn, someone will write a comment or, or someone will say something about how they really miss my hand dyed yarns. And, and, I, and I know it's meant in a positive way. I really do. But my brain's like, I miss hand dyeing yarn too. And then I get a little bit sad because it wasn't my choice. So um, one of the things that I'm trying to do to stay positive, even though I know it's people being positive and kind about my hand dyeing because I loved it. And I think that showed through in my dying. Um, is is go back and try some of these trends, some of these yarn trends and crochet and knitting trends that I missed. And one that I was really curious about was that planned color pooling, right? So I've been trying to get a yarn that'll work for planned color pooling. Now, because I didn't really understand exactly what I needed, I've had a couple of false starts. So I've gotten yarn that just didn't suit the project. And then I had yarn like this particular one. I thought, oh, this might work. I can trial it with this. But then it turns out that see how there's the image of the, it's, this is the knitted fabric. But the colors aren't even. You know, there's two rows of this pink and then, you know, then a pile of rows of this and then a bit of that gray, green and it changes to another green and then goes to pink. They need to be even, right? And so that one's not going to work for the planned color pooling. And then I bought some yarn just from a little $2 shop the other day that I thought, oh yeah, this will work. All the colors are even. And they are even, but they're only two inches, which is not enough. I need a lot more. So um, I've got all these like little balls of yarn that I've bought for a particular thing that aren't going to work for that. But also, I've also got like tons of bits and pieces. It's too much to throw away. But I was like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? I'm not really a scrappy project person. I kind of am a bit too much of a control freak. But you know what? This project is really helping with my control freakness. The control freak in me is just making sure I don't not use the dice. So I still get to have my little control. Like every now and again, someone would be like, oh, just pop in the color that you're missing. Why don't you just have a go with the one you haven't done? I'm like, but the dice didn't roll it. So that's, that's where that gets to come in. So um, my problem is a lot of these ones, I mean, this one's a bit different. There was definitely enough to make like something um, like a like a beanie or something like that, something small. But I'm like, okay, but I've got all these other ones that there's not enough to do stuff with. So I was like, I'm going to make a scrap, scrappy blanket. But I don't want it just to be like row after row. And, and I want it to be like a smallish travel project because I don't really have a travel project. My knitting project is um, a join as you go. So it's becoming too big to travel with. This project is not fit to be done off camera. I, the only work that I do off camera is finishing off at the end to get us ready for the next roll. Um, so I was like, oh, I've got to, I've got to come up with something that I can do with all this scrappy yarn. So before I show you what I'm doing, I want to have a look and see what you guys are doing. Um, good morning, Dolores. Good morning, Vampia. Kathy makes scrappy blankets. Um, and hats and scarves. 
Artsog makes, depending on the quantities, I'll make a beanie or add to a scrappy blanket. Um, Game of Widows makes Christmas decorations with leftovers. So many birds, hearts and mini jumpers. I love your mini things that you make for Christmas. They inspire me every year and then I just totally, you know, don't do it properly. Um, Holly has made a couple of baby blankets last year and had a lot of leftovers. Hence a blanket and a cardigan. Yeah. Um, add, do I remember correctly? You need 12 to 15 centimeter runs of each color for pooling. Yeah, I think um, from what I'm reading so far, some of them require several inches is what they say. They don't give you an actual number. And then there's this other one that requires 12 inches. So up to 12 inches of um of each color so I can use something that has a longer color repeat I was out the other day for lunch with um, with a friend and um, we were looking at different yarns and I put back a yarn and grabbed a different yarn thinking the other one was too long a color repeat only to realize it would have been perfect so hopefully this afternoon I'm going to pop out and go and grab a ball of that but also um, because caffeinated crafters is on I'm gonna go and check spotlight and see if they have anything in a long color repeat um, or a longer color repeat. So um, we'll see if we can find something there as well. Um, Sal is back with her mocker. Bring it. Um, I've shared the live to the Facebook group. If you would like to share anything from today's live, please share it in the thread to make it easier to find. Thank you, Sally. You're an absolute legend when it comes. I totally forget. And Sally remembers like every week. And I just, <sighs> thank you, Sally. Um, but yes, yeah, so if, if we, you're talking about you want to put photos of your scrappy blankets, please go and pop them over on today's thread. That would be amazing so I can see and be inspired and I'll add photos of mine over there as well. Um, Lizby says, what about Tina's Azul? I want to try that next. I don't, I don't know if I've seen that one. I'll have to have a look. I'll have to have a look. Um, Dolores says, depends on the yarn. For sock yarn, I like to fade from one color to the next through the foot. Still only using two colors, but split each into two, knit one color until it's running low, then fade. I like that idea too. That works. Um, and nests for wildlife rescues. Absolutely. Wildlife rescues usually, don't they want wool though? They don't want acrylic. Like I find that, I mean, admittedly right now my issue is acrylic. So that's probably where I'm thinking. But yeah, you could totally be doing it with wool as well. But I think you need wool for at least the local um, the local wildlife groups around here want you to make stuff out of natural fibres, so wool and cotton. Um, but it, I think it might depend from group to group. But anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm crocheting like granny stripes. Because again, that was something I hadn't done before, so I wanted to try granny stripes. Um, like I'd done it as a full width blanket, but not as sections. Um so I wanted to do some granny stripes and I like how this is coming out. I think this is sweet, but I actually had a ball, a bit more of this particular yarn and I got a fairly long piece. Um, do I have a tape measure? Let me have a look here. It's, it's about, I would say it's about 80 centimeters at a guess. Um, I could be wrong, but I've got this strip. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make this other piece as well, but I'm going to like, Hopefully, if it works, um, I'm going to kind of do a a um, log cabinish. You know, maybe maybe stitch this onto the side here with some plain color here of something else that I've got, and make it till it's big enough to be a a couch throw. Because I've realised that my family don't actually care what our couch throws look like as long as they've got one. So um, I've always been like, oh, no, I don't want to make that one. It's a bit, you know, higgledy piggledy. And I, I don't, you know, like like dad's blanket that we made. The fireside, that was stressful enough with the two different shaped blocks. Um, but yeah, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make little rectangles and squares and whatever of the different. At the moment, this is, um, I'm using eight ply acrylics. This one's a marble. From, so this is a Spotlight yarn. So in, in Australia, it's, Spotlight's our big box store. Um, and um, like our big box yarn store, I should say. 
and um but yeah so i'm gonna go and have a look and s but i'm gonna see if i can find the yarn oh we're up to the baby this is scary we're, this is scary stuff now um yeah i'm gonna see if i can find the yarn i want to get because yeah so if anyone has knows of a particular yarn that's currently available at spotlight that they know works with color pooling let me know um, and I'll try and get that. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to, you know, guess and probably end up with more balls of yarn to go into scrappy blankets. <laughs> um, but I got some really cute acrylic from the $2 shop. Now, I've already packed it away into a crate because it wasn't going to do what I wanted it to do and I didn't want it to get destroyed by Louis the dog. And Louis the dog likes yarn. Um, I actually think, I think I've worked out that it's not so much the yarn that he likes as the wrappers. He likes yarn wrappers. Um, oops, I've just made a bigger mess, haven't I? I'm just trying to get some yarn. There we go. We've just got a little bit more to go of this number one. Oh, I didn't put it up. Number one rooster is what this color is. Um, my, thank you, Claire. Your blanket is gorgeous. It's so squishy, honestly. It's going to be the blanket that everyone fights over. And I will win. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, I actually don't know if I will win, truth be told. Um, uh, Sally says, I think I've used a Four Seasons Marble yarn to pull doing a granny stitch. Okay, well, this particular one was the Magic Stripes. Um, and, yeah, it's it's not going to work. But I'll have a look because there, there might be another Marvel. Um, and we'll go from there. Legal-minded friends, Karen Cole, how are you going? It's good to see you. Oh, gosh, it's 1.20 in the morning. Well, thank you for popping in and, and saying hi. Um, been seeing you comment on my videos and I really appreciate that. And I will, if I don't see you anytime soon maybe in nick's live on saturday on saturday morning um but yeah so it is uh 120 in the morning seriously why are you awake in and so, i mean i'm awake at 120 in the morning sometimes you know doing stuff sometimes things just got to get done and your brain won't let you sleep so you just do it and then you get to go to sleep because you fight you got it done and your brain's like, oh, your reward is bedtime now. Ha, ha, ha. And then you still have to get up at like dumb o'clock in the morning. And you're like, why am I so tired? Oh, that's right. Because I had three hours of sleep. Fantastic. That's basically me most Sundays. Because for some reason, so Nick's lives finish at, at two in the morning for me. And then um, for some reason, my dumb body. Oh, by the time I have a shower and go to bed, it's more like three. Um... And then my dumb body is just like, oh, it's six thirty. It's time to get up. Like, no, it's really not. It's really not time to get up. I don't have to get up, but I get up anyway. Um, it looks like that skein really tied one. <laughs> yeah, that is. It's it's a yarn baby. This one. This is a legit yarn baby where the small ball of yarn comes out of the large ball of yarn. Um, <laughs> it was. It was. It was not a good go. I am terrible at finding the, the ends of balls as we've as we've worked out based on the fact that nearly every one of our seven colours I have had some level of this, like really. Um so yeah, it's it's not awesome. It's so not awesome. Uh, Gamer Widows has posted a photo in the fun zone. So I was going to show you guys live on camera when it arrived. But there are photos there now. Um, oh, Sally, thank you. She's going to go and check what it actually was. I appreciate that. Um, cause I really do want to try, I love the look of it. Have any of you done color pooling before? Um, with the crochet color pool? I know it was so four years ago, honestly, I really do. And you know, all the tutorials I'm finding are from four years ago. And you know, a lot of the yarn companies brought out color pooling yarns 
four years ago and I don't know how many of them still have colour pooling. Like they have specifically labelled them as suitable for colour pooling. Um, but, um, and there's a, I found like a, a, a place that lists yarns, all different yarns that are suitable for colour pooling. And I'm like, that's cool. Um, but I just, I, I haven't found any, and I, I am, I, there were things that I missed out on that I didn't do that I really want to try. So I'm going back and I'm hitting up all the old or older trends that hit the yarn crafters that I missed when I was working in hand dyed yarns only or predominantly. So keep an eye on my IG and on Facebook and I will post photos of, of progresses and failures. And you guys know I'm happy to share the failures as well as the wins. We all know that craft isn't perfect every time, right? Please tell me that there's not someone here watching this that their craft is perfect every single time. Because I will, I'll be sad if they pick the perfect yarn for the perfect project every single time. They never go, ah, oh, this isn't working and frog it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Freaky says, put back trash out to here. It's raining, but feels like hail outside. Okay. We'll stay inside. Don't go back out again if you can avoid it. Um, yesterday in Claire's live stream, she was talking about how she'd seen um, either a live or a post of mine where I had talked about sometimes you just need to frog a project. And... Um, and how she felt that it um, gave her permission to just give up on a project. Because sometimes you do, you feel like, oh, giving up on a project, that's failure. But the reality is it's not failure. It's just you've made a decision that that yarn's not going to work for that project. Now, I'm just going to get that out of the middle of there. And that should make next time easier. Okay, so you belong to the ball to the main mama ball it's like the umbilical cord <laughs> let's go with the analogy and then we'll put the baby on the mama and we'll put it back in the shell like in there you go i mean that looks terrible but whatever it's there hopefully we'll get another one again and we'll get to use up some of that um <laughs> Art talks to the one side of the Yeah, look, I, and that's a legitimate place to get rid of your yarn as well. Totally. Um, I'm just going to zoom out on Louis just a little. There we go. Because he's looking adorable. He's got his warthog. Can you guys see the little green collar on the, on the warthog toy that Louis's got his head on? That was the collar that Louis came to us with. That was his first collar. So we popped it on a toy because he grew out of it relatively fast. Um, so uh, we, we rolled the one with that dice. We've still got these dice to go. Okay. Um, but yes, a Ravelry D-Stash is a perfectly useful way to get rid of your extra yarns. And I have been so happy that people have de-stashed some of their old yarn because it saved me with my bad mathing on projects. Absolutely. Um, uh, how many bird names for these colors? Um, there's actually a few. So we've got, we've got the rooster, oops, rooster. There's a galah, a parrot and a duckling. Okay. And flamingo. So there's a few bird names. I hadn't put that together, Freaky. So thank you. Um, my crafting is perfectly imperfect. I like that too. Um, I, I pulled apart a huge scarf that was just wrong. Nice. Oh, Vampire says, Lion brand landscapes should work for colour pooling. Pretty sure it's on sale. Huh. I'm just going to, I'm going to take a photo. There we go. We'll save that for later. <laughs> um, I'll check that. I'll check that. Uh, uh, 
Uh, Leanne says, I did try it back then. So um, try color pooling back then. It would work for a bit, then go off track. And now I know you need to manipulate it a little when that happens. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm reading. It's not like a one and done scenario because if your stitches get a little looser or get a little tighter or anything like that, that changes everything. So, oops, I just I split something there and was looking hinky. So let's fix that up. So we're joining on our yarn here. Oh, that's a ridiculously long tail. Um, for a tail that's not going to be woven in. That's one of the advantages of this pattern of Claire's is that we don't weave in the ends. Wood, wood. Um, let me just get the repeat started. Okay. double check I'm doing it right yep okay um perfect every time good god no <laughs> I frog so many projects before I finally find something I'm happy with me too absolutely um uh no no he's he doesn't take his toys for walks actually um but he very much likes to to venture outwards and he hasn't done one for the last two days because um, his walking buddy has been away, so th back today. So that will be back tomorrow for walkings. Um, Lisby is the queen of frogging. Lisby is celebrating 17 months as a channel member in the ad skippers. Thank you, Lisby. Appreciate you um, doing that. Um, oh, might be able to find some planned pooling yarn on Ravelry stashing as well yeah absolutely um uh yeah because that was the same i was like yeah the flamingo is definitely a bird but then there is there's so many others that are birds as well so that's pretty cool um well it turns out it was the same magic stripes and i remember the only way i got it to pull for me was the granny stitch but i also remember it did take some work yeah yeah, I was like, this is this is too painful. This is not going to do what I want it to do. So I gave up. But I'm glad you didn't. You persevered. Maybe color pooling is not going to be for me. Maybe I'm too too quick to give up. Too quick. <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe one, two, three, four. Okay. I've just got to, you know, it's been it's been a week since I've worked on this project. It gets me. It's a little bit to to kick back into it. And do you know what's really weird? is with the queen right like because you guys know i worked on the queen forever um i felt guilty when i didn't work on it through the week i was like oh no oh no now i'm like oh, i really want to work on this but i can't because i've promised that every stitch will be on camera um or you know every every color every dice roll will be on camera not every stitch so i can only get up to a point where i have to put it down um Woody takes his toys all through the house. Oh, Louis' toys are everywhere. He's got like the craziest pile of toys I've ever seen. So none of our dogs have ever been sort of toy dogs before. Like S -S Snowy, we used to get her toys for Christmas. And we would do this thing where one of us would have a stopwatch. And then someone would throw the toy down and then start the stopwatch. And we would time to see how fast it was uh, before Snowy ripped the toy apart. Because she just... And she loved it. She had so much fun with it. So we did it every Christmas. Um, but it was like, you know, seconds. It was seconds before the toy was destroyed. Louis looks like he's like razzing the toys and chucking them around. And But when you look at the actual toy, there's not a stitch that's been popped. Now, every now and again, a toy is a little bit cheaper and it pops stitches. Well, then Louis clears it out of its stuffing. He We end up with stuffing everywhere and we've got to clear that up. But then he carries around what we've now t started calling toy skins. Okay, so we're like, oh, you've got your elephant skin. And you've got your cow skin where he's ripped out every last piece of stuffing, but it's just the fabric out. I nearly popped one of them in the shot. And I'm like, no, they look really terrible. Um, but yeah, it's, um, <laughs> he does, he, he removes the stuffing. So it's like, if, if it does, if something does happen, he will get in there, but 
He's had toys now for, for two years that he plays what appears to be quite roughly with, but obviously not as rough as it looks because they're still perfectly fine. Um, and he likes all sorts of toys. He likes the soft, squishy toys. And he likes, he loves tennis balls and frisbees. Like, absolutely mental for a tennis ball and frisbee. Um, rope toys and squeaky toys. So it's pretty much, that covers all the dog toy spectrum, doesn't it? Rope toys, squeaky toys, and stuffies. So... And he's got in his little bed, he's got a rope toy, he's got his stuffy, and up past the rope toy that you can't see, I think he's kind of lying on it. He's got a plastic hamburger in there somewhere, or at least there was. Um, oh yeah, that's because Snowy was part terrier, must destroy rodent-like toy. Yeah, that's probably exactly what it was. Um... It's funny you say persevere. It looked like I frogged what I did and I have no photo evidence. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I get that. I do. Have you guys seen that that um, thing going around? I think it's Instagram Reels. It's like, I will take photos of every step of the process. This is me doing the first step and then the second step. And then, ta-da, all finished. Oops. Oh, Jennifer Baker says we call them flatsies. <laughs> Flatsies sounds so much nicer than skins, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like a flat elephant. It is a flat elephant. Um, we had a family dog when I was little that wasn't happy until its stuffing was removed. Snowball would carry around deflated toys. Oh my gosh. Deflated. I like that as well. Definitely sounds way more fun than elephant skin and cow skin. <laughs> oh. Goodness me. Let's, let's keep working. Yeah, so um, I'm going to keep going with this, this sort of scrappy project. I've got a few bits and bobs of some 8-ply floating around um, that don't have a project. And then I also have quite a few balls of marble in white that I could, if I decided to edge something or piece it together or, you know, border the pieces before I stitch them together or some such. I don't know. I don't know really what I'm going to do yet. What What would you do? Like, if you had some pieces that were big and small, would you put an edge around them and then stitch them all together? Or would you just, you know, do a thinner join and stitch them all? Because I've got, I've got tons of the white. I could totally, like... There's half a crate. I think there's like 15 balls of white. And we all know how I feel about white yarn. Um, I found a photo. I found a photo, a Facebook group I'm in called Planned Pooling Australia. I knew I took a pic. Oh, hey, do you reckon you could screen grab that and throw it in the group for us? I'd love to see it, if, if you don't mind. Um... But yeah, so it's it's definitely um, it's def definitely a, a technique that I didn't get to do that I want to try. And the other one was um, the cross stitch, not cross stitch. What am I saying? Corner to corner. Um, there's like the corner to corner graph gans, and I've seen those, and I have never tried one of those. But I also found this really amazing lady on Instagram this week. Um, I can't think. Pagerix, M-S-P-A-G-E-R-I-X, I think is her name. She's only on Instagram. So her tutorials are Instagram videos. I'm not going to lie to you. It's annoying. On my phone, I cannot pause a video. So I'd have to swipe up like I was going to comment and then swipe back down again. Um, because you can't pause the videos, which I just found exceptionally frustrating. Anyway, I had to go. I had to go because I was looking for some options to use with this cotton. I love how she does her corner to corner. It's so neat and gives you beautiful edges. I don't know because it's a corner to corner join as you go. Okay. I don't know if I like the process. I... Like, there's a lot of ends, obviously. There's a lot of ends. Um, 
And it, this particular one, it's like a tartan kind of job. And this color here, I want to say this one. So going this way, there'll be a white stripe all the way along the blanket. So I was going to do this, these two strips of colors with their little white sections there. And then do that white one all the way across in one piece. So there was less ends. Um, but yeah, it's definitely um, a skill. And I saw what made me find this lady was someone in one of the crochet groups. She posted a blanket that she'd nearly finished, which was just absolutely stunning. This feels amazing. I can imagine this would look amazing all finished. I just don't know if I could do it. Does that make sense? Because also, it's another join as you go. It's not going to be a travel project. So I'm just like, oh, so frustrated. I keep finding these projects that are just going to be enormous and I can't travel with them. So, like, I'm just talking about traveling to craft group and stuff like that. Nothing nothing too exciting. Um, but, yeah, it's um, it's another one. So, yeah, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed making the actual squares. I actually love corner to corner, which... Um, which is why I made my dragon scales cow. So if you haven't seen that video, there's a video here on this channel that I made a beautiful um, silver silk um, dragon scales cow. And I love that cow so much. I, I think I think I need to make a new one. It's starting to get like the silk is getting so worn and so used that it's getting dull. So I'm going to give it another wash and see if that lifts it again. Otherwise, I may just have to, you know, it might be time. But I've had that one now for quite a few years and I use it a lot. But I do love corner to corner. I just haven't done anything too um, interesting with it. I've just done straight, like the, other than the dragon scales, cow, I've just done straight blankets, like corner to corner with stripes of colour, which is probably the most exciting part was there were stripes of colour. Um, and that was yet another project <laughs> where I stuck. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, got a dry spot all of a sudden. That was another project where I started at thinking I had tons enough yarn for it. Only to realise no, and that the colours were again discontinued. So it's got some different colour stripes in the middle. Totally, totally planned. Um, they look fine. And that blanket, I've realised, has got a little hole in it. So I've got to get in there and put a little patch on that one. Um, just to stop the hole from going too crazy. Because it's still a good blanket. Other than this, this little hole. It's a single bed size blanket and it's just got one little hole. And if you don't get onto them, especially if they go on the washing machine, they unravel. Do you guys ever patch your blankets or do you just sort of like, you know, okay, that one's done. Like fade it out, give it to, you know, as a dog bed or something. In saying that, Louis has got quite an expensive dog bed down there. He's got my woody. He's obsessed with it. Um, so... And now it smells like dogs, so it needs a wash before I can start. I didn't, I didn't worry about it during summer, but, you know, it's going to start cooling down. I want my Woody back for me. So we'll have to organise him a different dog bed for down there. Like, he's got the Woody with a blanket on it. So I'll wash that probably a couple of times, truth be told. And, uh, and reclaim that one for myself. Um... Holly says, I enjoy doing C to C graph gans, usually for babies' blankets. I haven't tried one. Have if, if you could put in, I mean, I don't know if you use a tutorial or not, or if you had a tutorial that helped you get started. If you could pop that in to the fun zone, that would be amazing if you if you've got one you can recommend. Because I just sometimes I just don't know where to start. Oh, thank you, Sally. That is awesome. I would definitely, definitely check that. Um, Lisby says I try to fix wherever I can. Yeah, look, there's some things where I'm like, you know what, you're done, you're done, you're toast. I, I can't, I can't deal with you. But sometimes it's just something smaller, you know, just a little patch will fix it. 
and then you know I'll get in there and try and do the best I can sometimes it looks a bit like a, a Franken scene from Frankenstein um, but the blanket can last a bit longer then but this one in particular it's a weird it's a like I don't know it might have been a Louis nibble truth be told when Louis was a puppy he ate through two blankets um, so it might have been it might have been a Louis nibble that got this one so because it's just a little bit too perfect um <laughs> I'll fix it but I may put it aside for an exceptionally long period of time till I get to hmm <laughs> um Dolores you and I do a lot of things the same don't we yes I think so <laughs> oh we're coming up to another dice roll oh my goodness see now that we've had a one if we got an eight, it'd be a bit of a trickier vote, wouldn't it? It would be a bit of a trickier vote. Because like last week, it's like, well, if we get an eight, we just vote for one. Because we haven't had a one before. But now what would you choose if you got an eight? Um, it's been cool since I do that too. Yeah, definitely. I have noticed similarities. Yeah, <laughs> just a couple. We craft the same. That's kind of funny. Oh, I'm like, which colour? Is it going to be one where we can get rid of some more yarn baths so we can make it all nice and neat over there? Because I will confess, it is doing my head in a little bit, like having all like the big bits of like bluck, like everywhere. I don't like it. I would like to get rid of it. Um, I nearly wound them all into balls, like into cakes, just so that I didn't have to look at those anymore. And then I was like, no, I like having them how they are. They sit nicely. Um, you know, when they're not yarn barfing all over the place. So, yeah. Uh, all good intentions. Yes. Lisby says three. Always three. Let me have a look. What's a three? One, two. Oh, it's purple. Of course. It's purple. We've only had one purple too. So we've had two galah, one anemone, four ducklings, three amphibians, two morphos, and two parrots. So, yeah. I mean, I do like the duckling with this pink. It really does just, like... I would say my favorite colors with this pink are the duckling, the amphibian, and the morpho. I would say they stand out the best. The galah kind of blends in a little. And so does the parrot. And actually, you know what? The rooster is not super, super contrasty. But we'll use all the colors. You don't need it all to be eye melting and bright. Sometimes you need a bit of calm. So do you guys all take photos and turn them into grayscale, like black and white photos, so that you can check your contrast colors to see if they work? I do. If I'm using multiple colors together, it's probably the first thing I do usually. It's just to double check that they contrast even just a little bit because sometimes you're surprised by like two colors that look totally different but when you take them in black and white they're exactly the same shade of gray even if they're just a little bit different it makes a difference they pop just that little bit um do we all have a favorite color for leanne it's green so lisby it's it's three it's the purple um look i like the purple i have to say i really do like the purple um the duckling's growing on me. Like, you guys know how I feel about yellow, but I think we, in this project, it's the duckling. Otherwise, it is the morpho. Like, for just general usage, morpho. 
and then so one two three four and then the fifth one okay Boof. bye all right lisby says i'm on the third last row of the cosmic cal i may finish this blanket yet yeah, you will finish this blanket we are here to help you finish it in all the live streams you can come in and you can work on it all righty it's dice roll, dice roll. Dice roll. time. Roll. roll the dice to choose the next color. Alrighty. I entered a hawk a hawk spree show for my spinning. Uh, I had four weeks to make some art yarn for my entry tomorrow and Saturday are the drop off dates. Guess what I started yesterday? <laughs> Don't leave anything to the last minute or anything. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see. It's a three. It's a three, Lizby. You poured your energy into the world and you got your three. Oh, it's... Oh, we get to clear up some yarn bath. Look at this. This one's got some issues. Where's the end? There is the end. I saw it. I saw you come back here. We'll get through these yarn baths. We will. She tells herself, hopefully. Okay. Up oh, there you go. <clears throat> Alrighty. Join on three. Shannon likes the duckling. Lisby is a happy camper. I like the purple. The purple looks good. I like all these colors, honestly. And have you guys checked out Maker's New Colors? I've got a link in the description. Um, if you want to go and click on that, um, that is an affiliate link to go and hit the Maker Store. No additional cost to you. It gives me some extra money to buy some more Maker Colors. But she's just released um, her fall colors. So if you prefer more of a... Um, you know, not these eye melting bright colors, but beautiful browns and greens. And like, there's a teal there that I just have to get my hands on. And because teal is my favorite. Um, but yeah, it's just, there's so many, there's a pile of new colors out. And I definitely want to get my hands on them. So um, there's a link in the description. If one of the mods could chuck that in the chat, that'd be great. Um, and um and go and check out the new colors that she has i uh, thank you thank you um so yeah definitely um definitely worth checking out and it's really good value look you know you probably will have way better luck getting the middles out than i do i don't think it's the yarn i actually do think it's me um, now, and, and in all fairness, I will say that we did notice a little problem with some of these colors, which is they're a dash light. Um, but in saying that, I still think they're great value. Just understand that you may need an extra ball if you're buying for a particular project. Because they're only $8.50 for a 200 gram ball of premium acrylic, which I don't know, like I, I personally think is fantastic value. Because it does two things. A, it gets your hands on to some beautiful yarn. And B, it supports a local Australian business. So she is importing these yarns. But any acrylic is imported to Australia. There are no acrylic mills in Australia. So she does import the yarn. But she finds it and sources it and organises the colours. and. But yeah. So you get to support a small Australian business. You get gorgeous acrylic and it's at a really great price honestly um lisby says use a yarn butler and take it from the outside i mean you could these are really big balls like these make me think of red heart super saver bullets right so my yarn butler wouldn't cope with them they're too long for my yarn butler um it's better for actual like little balls and things like that and I, I prefer going from the inside of the ball. I know there's people out there that are like, oh, when you go from the inside of the ball, it unwinds the yarn, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. Whatever. 
you'll actually find that when you buy like a 10 pack of yarn, the balls are all done. Um, they're all wound. I suppose they're all wound the exact same way, but I don't care. Like I just make the, make changes because some yarns wrap it one way. Some yarn companies wrap it the other way. You've got to work out which way works for the different yarn companies. Some expect you to go from the center pool. Some expect you to go from the outside. So you're going to have to work it out from yarn to yarn to yarn anyway. And I really honestly don't care that much about that. I care more about making sure that I block a project at the end, that I've woven in all the ends, that, you know, I've done gauge and gotten it to be the right size that I want it to be. And I've got other priorities, other priorities. Sorry, I've been in Facebook groups again this week. <laughs> I should really not do it. I get grumpy because ev invariably every single comment that starts with, how do I do this thing? comes back with somebody going, I've been doing this craft for 60 years and I've never done that thing. And it's just like, I just sort of sit there thinking, there was no reason for you to comment. Like zero. For that person to comment, there was zero reason because the person, the original poster, has asked for help how to do a thing. They have asked for, like whether it's blocking or, you know, a particular technique or some sort of cast on or whatever like there's all different things but ever like replying with I have done this for 60 years and never done that thing just to me sounds like you have never tried something new you know and and I just like oh okay so for 60 years you've never tried a new technique for this thing you've just done the one thing that you learned how to do like back in like People used to cast on one way until they realized a stretchy cast on helps you block lace and, you know, a stretchy cast on works better with socks and all this sort of stuff. And it's just like, well, I've done it this way for 60 years. It's like, that's great. That's fantastic. I know of political regimes that have lasted for 60 years that no one should be proud of. <laughs> oh. I'm in a mood. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, we did. We got the purple anyways. Hang on. There's one coming through from Lisby. There it is. My favorite this week was a photo of random yarn. What ply is this? And heaps of, heaps of, heaps of people answered without saying wraps per inch. Like, honey, you can't tell from a photo that that's eight ply. Yeah, if there's no label and there's no wrapper and there's no wraps per inch and there's no sort of, you know, five cent piece for gauge kind of thing or, you know, a coin that everyone will recognize, like nothing, you just like, ah. Oh. Yeah, knit spin girls. I've seen this happen as well. I thought it was just me, so I wasn't going to say it because I was like, I was convinced that they were done the wrong way or the other way. And so some you've got to go from the outside and some you've got to go from the inside just to get the colours to match up. Yeah, I thought it was just me. I thought that one was just me. Yeah. But, ah, oh, yeah, that, that, that would be, for, oh, yeah, that's eight ply. It's like, really? Is it? Okay. Um, Leanne, this is exactly right. I'm going to make this very, very big. Can I bring you to the top of Louis? I cannot. I'll have to make you a bit smaller. I'll put you right in the middle. These kind of comments make the person asking the question feel bad about asking. You know, and like any of you that have been on this channel know I'm all about the questions. Like, ask the questions, get your answer, trial things, change things, do things differently. Like, have a go. And don't make someone feel bad because you don't want to try something different. I agree with you. I agree with you. Artsog says it's a good day to be grumpy. I think so. I think so. I'm trying to avoid all my social medias today as well because like the final episode of Picard's dropped in the US and I'm like, when 
when do I get it? Like, I've been waiting till Sundays to watch it. I'm not waiting till Sunday for this one. I can't. So I'm like, the second it drops, I'm like, oh, had an appointment, canceling it. No, no, I'll, I'll work around it. But I'm going to watch it as soon as I possibly can. And so I've had no Twitter this morning. Um, I love when they say I've been knitting for X number of years and never blocked. And then later in a conversation to reveal that they have all along but they just didn't call it blocking. I just soak it and lay it flat. I mean, that is blocking. That is the definition of blocking. Either lay it flat, stretch it out a little bit, or pin it. But you have to wet it somehow first, move it into the desired shape, and allow it to dry in that position. That's, that is the definition of blocking. You're right, Dolores. Absolutely right so funny oh my gosh oh the soapbox is out the soapbox is out <laughs> yes try not to i'm like i really want to try and get i love i love being able to get four dice rolls into a live stream and every time i put my hands off the yarn to to talk with my hands angrily i feel guilty because i should be stitching Blocking covers many techniques. Oh, do you know what? And people who knit lace and then don't block it. You're like, well, why did you bother? Why did you bother going to all of that effort to make that beautiful piece of fabric only to not show us your gorgeous stitches by going, it's done, as you rip it off your needles and hand it to somebody. Go, there's your gift. And the other people that are like, oh, there's no point in blocking because the second someone washes it, the blocking comes out. And it's like, True. That's true. That's what happens. Yeah. But those people should be washing it and lying it flat to let it dry, honestly. Um, oh, my gosh. I told you that my mum said that she'd been knitting for X amount of years and never made a swatch. I just laughed at her. I know. And do you know, do you know what's... I like, I hate it. I hate that I, like, like, really? Like... Did you magically make that cardigan fit somebody? Like how? How do you not swatch? Oh my goodness. Um, I've found some crafters. I've made this too big. I need to shrink it back down again. Um, there we go. I've found with some crafters merely asking the question it makes them realize there is more than one way to do something and their assumptions were wrong, making them feel bad. Hence questions are bad. Okay. No. No. <laughs> that logic is flawed, Artag. Flawed logic. Oh, I just want to make it shorter. I don't want to make it. I want to make it longer, but narrower. Oh, look, that's that's what we're getting. I hope you guys can read them. I've done something. I don't know what I did. I did something, and now I'm not happy. Soak and dry in shape. Yes. Shannon says, I'm always learning something new crocheting. Me too. Me too. And that's the thing. We have to be open to learning something new, right? I, oops, I'll put that back. Sorry. We have to be open to, to learning something new. We have to be open to trying new yarns, trying new techniques, trying out a different hook. Like... Or, or needles or whatever it is if we're not open to trying the new things like we we don't get to diss all over the people that are like that they're willing to try something new that they haven't done before and they've gone into the group that they thought that they could get some help and support from only to realize that nope if you're willing to try something new you're out um you know like i i, I love this always learning something new crocheting absolutely um oh Arta agrees that logic is flawed are you playing devil's advocate then i'm never good at working out if somebody's just playing devil's advocate or if they're serious so yeah but you're right some do people see it that way that when someone asks the question that challenges their beliefs therefore it's an attack but it was never an attack it was a question um, learning something new, come back here you, learning something new 
is with I decided is why I decided to do the cosmic cowl. I wanted to learn some new stitches. Yeah. And I haven't liked all of the stitches, but it's expanded my brain. Absolutely. You know, there's one stitch that I have not done yet that I have heard horror stories about that I still, I haven't tried it. Not, not because I, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm avoiding it. Just because I have never done a project or seen a project that I wanted to do that it was in. But I want to try anyway, which is, is it called the, the waist coat, waist coat stitch? Is that the one? Um, it sounds terrible, but apparently it looks amazing. And, um, I think I would like to try it just, you know, so I can tick it off the list of things to try. Uh, understanding behavior is a passion of mine from Artsog. Gosh, I look, I like to people watch. I don't understand. I don't always understand. And that frustrates me a little bit. And that's on me. That's not on them. I don't understand how people think things sometimes because I have my way of thinking, you know, and it's the same with like craft police people, people that try to put limitations and rules on things. You know, it's, it's, if you've got a limitation on something, understanding that it's a self-imposed limitation that's okay. You can legit do that. I do that. I've put limitation on this project has to have dice rolls to choose the colors. I put limitations on when I'm using hand dyed yarns, I make it a special gift for somebody. You know, it is, I have, I do put limitations on things, but they're my limitations, you know, so they're not craft rules. Um, your mum also asks if a particular pattern will work with a particular yarn and needle size. I say, look, you're going to have to swatch it and find out. Never happens because you'll never swatch it. Because <laughs> that's the thing. Sometimes you just have to test it. And some of the best things I've done have come out of me just going, I wonder if this will work. Also, some of the biggest dumpster fires. But... I would have missed out on the good things too if I hadn't have been willing to test it and trial something new. Um, oh, is waistcoat stitch just moss stitch? I love moss stitch. That's just a single crochet and, and one chain, right? That's moss stitch. I love crochet moss stitch. I didn't realise it was called waistcoat stitch. Um, somebody who does not... Somebody who does not swatch is a... A pantser? Oh, that's a pants pilot. Or they just fly by the seat of their pants when magically making something that'll fit. Oh, adorable boy. You've, you've got a hamburger at your bottom. Louis. Louis. This is just dead to the world. Okay. We found the hamburger. <laughs> but yeah, I look. I, oh, there we go. I worked out what I did. I've got to have my hand over that and then just magically do this. Okay. That works. Good to know. Never do that again. Um, click this and scroll there. Um, so it should be swatch. That's all right. We, we got it. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I look and I will, I, I fly by the seat of my pants with a lot of non like projects that it doesn't matter if gauge is a thing. If I know I have a ton of yarn, right? Like if I'm not worried about running out, like when I was doing those added 24 kits, I worked to get her gauge. Because I had a limited amount of yarn and I wanted to make sure that I could finish the project, which I did. I finished both. I'm very proud of myself. Um, whereas if I was just making them with, you know, locally sourced stuff, be like, oh, yeah, whatever. I'll go to Spotlight and grab another ball if I need to. Um, and this, this particular project is a little bit of a seat of the pants project for me because... No one's made this project with this yarn in the dimensions that I'm making it or with the changes that I've made. So I am, you know, seat of the pantsing it a little. Well, we've managed to get through a lot more of the purple buff. We'll just try and tidy it up a little. I should grab the ball winder and just, but then I'd be tempted just to keep going and wind the entire ball. I know you guys all saw that. I'm done. I'm over that. 
back over there. All righty, back on to uh, that one. We need to get Mathrox. Nice roll, get rid of an enemy. Bring up Flamingo. Okay. Um, we're on to the next row of Flamingo. We are powering three. Let me check the time here. We're doing good. We're doing good. Okay. We do our single crochet for our first stitch and then jump in. Um, I was actually like Claire yesterday mentioned in her live chat how I've made some little adjustments to her pattern. And I thought she would be a bit funny about it because, you know, it's her, it's her pattern. But she is not funny about it, which I loved. Um, linen crochet stitch makes my eyes go funny. I think <coughs> linen stitch... <coughs> I thought linen stitch was still moss stitch. I could be wrong. <coughs> I could be wrong. Meg Swanson, Swanson, here we go, never swatches. She says she'd rather rip out half a sweater than swatch. So if Elizabeth Zimmerman's daughter doesn't swatch. <laughs> Look, the difference is she can probably knit half a sweater faster than I could for a start. She's phenomenal. Um, secondly, if I had to pull out half a sweater just because I didn't swatch, I'd cry. Oh, there'd be tears. There'd be frustrations. Um, I would definitely prefer to swatch a little to at least work out if I like how the fabric drapes. I mean, if you've used the yarn before, you know. But have I split that stitch? No, I didn't. It's just a hinky bit. There we go. Um, yeah. Okay, Leanne also thinks the linen stitch is the waist coast or the moss stitch. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to double check now because I'm like, really? We call the same thing this many names? Um, oh, it goes into a different part of the lower stitch. I'll have to check. I'll have to check. So, Because I, I did a linen stitch um, for a project. And I don't remember, it was a while ago. It was quite a while ago. It was a number of years since the last time I've done a whole project using it. It was actually a scrappy cow. So, um, which looks amazing, actually. I think I, s yeah, it's just here. Hang on. Oh, no, this isn't linen stitch. Or it might have linen stitch in it, but it was a whole pile of different stitches. It was like each colour had a different, like there was different rows. Okay, yeah. But maybe, I really enjoyed this project, I have to say. This is another one that gets a lot of wear. All my hand-dyed yarns. Lots of wear. Super soft. Up you go, little thing. Um, yep. Uh, waistcoat stitch, also known as centre post stitch, uh, and linen and, okay, so because I thought the waistcoat might be different, but linen and moss are the same. Uh, thank you, Sally. I appreciate you checking that for me. Um, saves me having to remember to check later. But yeah, I haven't I haven't tried waistcoat stitch. I've definitely done linen stitch and moss stitch. Um, yeah, I really love that cow. There's a I'm not sure I can't remember the name of the pattern. I'll see if I can dig it out and put it in the fun zone. It was such a fun project, honestly. And I just used a different yarn. Like it was all four ply um, sock yarn. And I had it was, you know. Out of my bag of scraps. My scraps bags got used again. So I actually think that was the last of some of the bigger amounts. And now what's left in the scraps bag will work for um, Battenberg squares or uh, I think that's it, the Battenberg squares because I, I needed two and a half grams of colour for each square. Okay. 
I don't know if I'm going to have enough yarn to finish that Battenberg now that I'm no longer dying because I was kind of relying on the fact that I would always end up with bits of yarn. So, yeah. Hey, Bianca, were you here when I mentioned that Caffeinated Crafters is on tonight? If you can make it. We're getting there. We're plowing through. This is... I actually think this would make a lovely cow. Like, if you wanted to try this. And I, I, would, I would make it flat and then stitch it together, truth be told. Um... I mean, you could you could just work it in the round, I suppose. You could do the math. Um, but yeah, I definitely think this would be a lovely squishy cowl as well. Um, oh, you're looking forward to it. Awesome. Glad to hear. Because we did change our dates around. Just there was a little, you know, we, we missed the first week of April because we did an extra one at the end of March. So that we didn't clash with Easter. So the waistcoat stitch, here we go, here we go. The waistcoat stitch, you go into the center of the SC in the row below. Whereas in the linen stitch, it's the RUSC into the chain one. Okay. So you go into the, all right, okay. I can, and I can also see why people are just like, oh, I never want to do that again. Especially if you do it like a four ply. I could imagine that would be quite some work. Um, so like I'm just I'm just gonna bring this here. So it would be like you go into here, like in between the legs of the stitch. Okay. Alrighty, I can I can I can see how. All right, pull those out. Radio. I think I I think I need to try a project. That has some waistcoat stitching. Just as, just so I can say I've done it. Just so I can say I've done it. Lisby is going to try and come along tonight. That would be awesome to see you if you can make it. I know it's a little bit of a journey. Um, yeah, so in the fun zone, go and throw over your favourite links for maybe a, sm a small project <laughs> using the waistcoat stitch. No torturing me. I also don't want colour changing on individual rows. <laughs> I'm getting fussy now. I want to be able to use the same ball of yarn for the entire project. <laughs> if I've got to do a stitch that people groan about, I at least don't want to have to weave in a million ends as well. Because weaving in ends is not my favourite job. <gasps> you guys! What am I doing? Oh no, I've got to pull all the way back here. One, two, three, four. I got sidetracked, didn't I? I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm getting close to the end really quickly. And then realized why. Oh, yeah, because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Good job. Well done, me. Go, me. Um, Lisby, if, there's, if you want me to bring a ball, I'll, I'm going to throw a ball of this yarn into my bag. Just so you can have a squish if you come. But don't panic because it doesn't take up a ton of space. And, you know, if you don't come, I won't be offended. But I think I'm going to pop up a bit early if I can. Although I may not be able to. I might have to duck out at some stage. You just zoomed off on your own little way. I did. I just was like, la, 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 Oh, my project. All by myself. Pattern? What pattern? Who needs a pattern? Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah. Because I've got, I've, got I've got something I've got to do late this afternoon. Can I bring a purple one? Yes, I can bring a purple one for you to check it out in real life. I can. 
Um, do I bring the cosmic with you? If you want to, you can. If it's huge, you don't have to. But it is totally up to you. The 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 coffee club there have been amazing, and they um they do try to accommodate us quite nicely. I think they're starting to look forward to us being there. It's a very nice it's a very nice venue, and the staff the staff that we've dealt with so far have been pretty pretty good, for the most part. Yeah, I had to frog that bit back, Shannon. Um, where you rip it out. So it's like, rip it, rip it. So, yeah. Fixed, though. Fixed it. I think I need a bit more water. So I'm just going to move that to there. I'm concerned that the, the hamburger has disappeared again. It's under his leg. Um... So, yes, yeah, so today after the live, I'm going to have some lunch and then I will come back in here and finish off the bits of the blanket because what I tend to do is to get us ready for next week, I will get us up to the next dice roll. So if I've got more flamingo to finish off, I'll finish that off. Um, if I just, if we've just done a color change, like for, for the, the contrast color, I'll finish that off. Then the flamingo row so that we can try and get as many dice rolls in as possible. I know for a fortnight, a for a week is not a lot. Maybe we could have another project in the future where we just sit down for like an, a, an under predetermined amount of time and work out okay we need x amount of rows of this color and just roll the dice and write all the numbers down so that we've just got a list of which colors that we use so we can plan our project possible yes interesting viewers viewing for those that have no idea what we're doing no <laughs> Like, yeah, we're just going to roll these dice for like half an hour and get 300 dice rolls under our belt so we can get ahead on a project. Like, nothing to see here. <laughs> oh my gosh. I saw some new audio gear come out at the NAB um, tech show that's held in the US at the moment. I can't remember exactly what state it's in. Who knows? I don't even know. I think it's San Diego. No, is it? I don't know. NAB, tech show, wherever that is. Um, and Rode, which I use Rode mics and Rode audio interface. Um, they've brought out this really cool piece of equipment called a Streamer X, which um, you can plug both your camera and your microphones into. Um, so it's like a little portable box that does everything. You don't need a capture card because it is a capture card. You don't need an audio interface because it is an audio interface. Um, so that looks pretty, pretty interesting and pretty cool. But, but something that I really like, I like the look of it. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and if, you know, if someone gave me one, I'd probably use it. But I really like, what have I done here? I think I... Uh, I did. I skipped a stitch. There we go. I'll fix that up. I needed that one. Um, I really like the look of what they're calling their Roadcaster Duo, which is like their Roadcaster um, Pro. Roadcaster Pro? I can't think of the name, but basically it's this big thing for plugging in a pile of mics. It's an audio interface. It does all your sound effects. So basically the reason why we have to use this software for our live streaming at the moment is because I can't route all our cool, fun audio into StreamYard, which is where we normally live stream. Um, and so we have to use Ecamm, which Ecamm's great. Like, don't get me wrong, I like Ecamm too. 
but there's some things about StreamYard that I, I like as well. And one of the things I don't like is that you cannot bring in system audio or anything like that. So um, this, this Rodecaster Duo would mean that I would have the hardware solution of the issue that has been bugging me. Unfortunately, like the Rodecaster, it is expensive. <laughs> So it is on a wish list. I entered a competition to win one. So fingers crossed, hey. Everyone can cross their fingers that I might win one. That would be nice. So the Rodecaster um, is like the, the standard one with the with four inputs. That one's about, I think it's down to around 900 Australian dollars. Um, and then the Duo is so far it's being... Um, the duo is so far marketed at being 500 US dollars, I think, um, which is only going to be a couple hundred dollars cheaper. But, you know, we'll wait and see. Originally, the Brocaster Pro came out and it was 11 or 1200 Australian dollars. And then after about six months, it's dropped down to 900. So fingers across that it comes to a price where I can use it and I'm less limited with the softwares I want to use due to hardware shortfalls. Yes. Because you guys know I am a technology junkie who has not bought any technology other than a new phone. I bought a new phone in a really long time. So since we moved into this studio and I bought this microphone, that was the... No, I lie. I lie. I bought a whole new computer and screen and everything. But that was like a necessity. That wasn't just because I wanted a fun new toy. I did. I bought a Mac Mini, um, and we stream using Mac software now. And um, I got a new monitor. Um, what else did I get that was new? I think that was it. Because I had to replace a laptop that was dying, which I still got to take up because I, I want to see if they can make it work. Because it was a good laptop. It was a yeah, hello laptop. It's just right there, listening, listening to me talk about him. So I, I do really need to take him in and find out what the problem was. There we go. We are at the end of the pink. The flamingo. Sue Singleton, welcome to the chat. Just popping in for the last half an hour. You're working. For those of you who don't know, that's what we call working and lurking together. Alrighty, just in time for a dice roll, Sue. Just in time. Okay. It's so dice, roll. dice roll time. Roll the dice to choose the next colour. Let's get it. Does it, it rolled off screen, so do we get to re-roll it? Yeah, I'm re-rolling it. That's... <laughs> It was the same number anyway. It rolled a three both times. So guess what? Purple again. <laughs> oh, come on. Is this the first time we've used the exact same colour two rows in a row? It is. There you go. Two pink purples, two rows in a row. I better write that down. The nature of true randomness sometimes is that it's not it's it has duplicates. So that's one of the things why I wanted to make sure that we used the dice. Something truly random, not weighted dice, or you know, dodgy dice. Because even things like computer algorithms are written by people. Uh, because the world knows purple is the best. <laughs> Do you have a color for three, 33 if you roll? Th I had not considered what would happen in my brain if we ended up with two colors on top of each other. I mean, the advantage is they will stagger opposite. So the purples will be over here instead of right there. So it will stagger, um, at least. 
that making them look a little different. I don't know where my brain will go if there's three. A three plus three equals six. Oh my gosh. Oops, don't be a knot. Just be a little. Oh, you are, you stinker. Oh, far out. That means this is going to be painful for the rest of this. Unless I, unless I just pull it out and draw it through. Oops. Okay. Try again. If it had been much further along in the project, I would have done something with the ball rather than unraveled what I'd worked on. It just depends. Um, I can't do true random. I need it to balance more. See, I wanted true random. So I'm trying not to cringe. <laughs> My brain's just like, no. <laughs> You've got like a pile of yellow and now two purples in a row. Why can't we control the colors more? Because it's a, stop that. It's a, it's a random blanket. Oh, it actually gives me joy as well that I'm letting myself just do it. I'm like, we're doing it. We're doing the second row of purple in a row because that's what the dice said to do. Um, I did make them stagger. That's exactly right. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of things that I could do as a sort of like a, as a, a a mulligan to get a do-over or a, or a, you know, change it to somehow suit my brain better, but it defeats the purpose of this project, which is for me just to not have control over the colours. So sometimes I just need to chill. And this is, this is doing it. The dice are in charge of the colour changes. Shame on you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to sneeze, I think. We're going to try and power through to get to our next dice roll. Because I, I, I think I will cry if it's purple again. Like, I like the purple. Don't get me wrong. The purple's awesome. But <laughs> I think I'd like something else next, please. And if we vote and you guys vote for purple, like if we get an eight and you all vote purple, I don't even know what I'm going to say. I don't even know because that would be, that would be willful. That's willful of you lot. That would be totally like, let's just make Chantel's head explode intentionally. And now that I've said it, either A, we won't get an eight. Or B, you guys will vote for purple just to see if my brain explodes. Just chill. Just relax, Chantel. You'll be able to get <coughs> you'll get out your meditation for when things don't go your own way. Relax and allow it to happen. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I could totally write, write my own guided yoga on this one, I think. All purple, all the time. <laughs> Look, I like purple. I think purple's a great colour. It's one of my favourite colours out there. I, you can't grow up in my mum's house and not have an appreciation for purple. Um... I don't want purple a third row in a row. <laughs> uh, so with a roll of one tonight, all colours. and Yes, that's right. Yeah, we've now used all of the colours. Now, we just haven't had an eight roll, um, which will um, trigger the vote. But we have now used all of the colours. That's right. 
we've used rooster, which was our last one. That's a little bit of a knotty knot knot. Knotty knot 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 knot. You kind of just got to work around it. Alrighty, we've de knottified some yarn. Alright, let's keep crocheting. Where's my hook? There it is. Had to get some yarn out of the bath. Is there a better word for it than the pile of bath? I'll just dig through this pile of bath until I've got enough to do a bit more on this row. Um, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, I'm working on this. I am also working on my knitted blanket, which I haven't done much on this week because I've been getting some other jobs out of the way. Um, what have you guys all been working on this week? Let me know. I know some of you are making the making one of these, but I know not everybody is. So let me know in the chat. And also, let me know what you're drinking in your cups. Because my water thing is nearly empty over there. And I'm trying to toss up what I'm going to do next. <laughs> I prefer chicken over rooster. Oh gosh, yes. I'm going to skip reading the rest of that. I, the whole eel from Sal should have been the dead giveaway not to read the comment above. Um, you did say you wanted to clean up all that yarn. I did. I did say that. I did say that. And it's working. It's totally working. The goal is happening. Um, we've still got a little bit to go, but... And I'm not sure what's going to happen when we get to the actual ball because it doesn't look awesome there. Um, Holly has been knitting on socks lately. <laughs> Yarn buff does sound more interesting than Tangle of Mess. I mean, it sounds, yeah. It's, it de definitely gives you a different image in your brain. I did nearly read it. Ugh, so close too. It was like, ah, oh, stop, brakes on, brakes on. Um, I've been edging a blanket for the last couple of days. Coffee in this mug this morning. Did I finish my coffee? I didn't. It's cold, but I'm going to drink it. Mmm. Delicious. Mmm. Um, that may have possibly been my third cup of coffee today. I, I've realised, like, I don't know if it was my second or third. I can't remember if I made a second coffee this morning or if that was it. Um, when not sewing, I've cast on a hand spun beanie. Beverage is strawberry and cream tea from Nat. That sounds nice. That sounds good. And you've been sewing up a storm because Emma, our game widows, will be at the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show with her first stall at the show. So she's making a gazillion of her amazing project bags um, and her humbugs and lots of other bits and bobs stitch markers all sorts of cool things so any little notions or things to hold your notions on hold your projects you need to go and check out emma's stall because she's going to have all of the things and emma chooses the best fabrics i have to say the cutest fabrics and i cannot wait until i can show you guys 
my new gamer um, humbug that Emma has sent. Um, but she did say she posted a photo in the fun zone. So you guys can go and check it out. Come on, big knotty knot. That's Check out the size of that knot. I'm like, where do I even start with that? Just gentle, gentle. Sort of like a knot on a knot on a knot. It's like knotception. Some of this is like, it needs, it needs like, to come through like as in I need to either pull the project through the gap or the yarn ball through the gap I'm like I'm so close to the end I could just cut it off and then then can draw it through that way but I'm not quite close enough for it not to affect me goodness me I'm not grumpy I'm not grumpy Okay, there's no more knots now until we get to the actual end of the ball. But, like, look at the end of the ball. It's, like, got this, which is nerve-wracking a little me. Those words are not words. Um, oh, I missed some comments. Hang on, let me just scrub back a little. Um... Oh, Sal said, no, the U was for you saying you're working your way through the bath. My mind went somewhere where it didn't want to go. Fair enough. Okay. Um, just finished two pairs of socks, started an Attic 24 ripple blanket. Now the weather is getting cooler. Currently knitting a hand spun cabled beanie. So many projects on the Girl from Knit Spin Girls, which I absolutely love. I'm going to go and check out the ripple blanket from Attic 24 because I'm, turns out I'm now an Attic 24 addict. Um, love working on her patterns they're just so well written and they make cute blankets and bright colors i love her color choices um uh, leanne finished some quick projects a beanie on a loom two amigurumi some borders on a few tea towels and now i'm back to my cardi good job leanne um jennifer is knitting her son a jumper all experimental modular knitting it's been a long time since I've done any modular knitting uh, and um, modular crochet. So I'm kind of going to be using some of my modular crochet training when I'm working on this scrappy blanket because I, I really want it to be just a little bit fun and a little bit different. So while I'm going to have a couple of main color or a couple of large sections of colors, the rest are going to be fairly small. Okay, so we got through the majority we got through all the loose yarn bath. I mean, I'm sure when I pull on that, something else is going to come out. So, not awesome. But it looks a bit better on the shelf now. I mean, the rooster is just terrible. But anyway, back to Flamingo. One, three, and three. I'm curious to see how we go when we get to the end of a ball. And I want to see how many rows we get so I can estimate how many balls of the pink I'm going to need. Because I do have quite a few of the pink. I did go in and order in, like, I think I got six more. So it's like eight, eight balls of pink in total. Okay, um... No, don't split your stitches, you terrorist. There we go. Uh, okay, um, Game of Widows' tablecloths arrived the other day because she's decking out her stand. Um, Sal's popped in the link for the Game of Widows Etsy store, which is awesome. So you can go and check out all of her shapes and different kinds of bags that she makes. It's the Coast Ripple Kit from the Woolworth House. I'll have to go and check that out. 
Um, I've been finding that the kits from the wool warehouse, even confer converting them to AUD, they're just pretty solid value. Um, we do have some places that supply the, spe the Starcraft Special DK in Australia, but they do come out to be quite expensive. Like, I think I've worked it out to be about five or six dollars a ball, so per 100 grams, um, if I wanted to, you know, buy the yarn locally. Whereas I can get like a, a 15 ball kit sent from Wool Warehouse, including postage. And um, with, uh, with the, uh, what do you call that? With the kit of the Not Cal, it also included a full color copy of the pattern. So um, yeah, I find them just be good, good value. Oh my God. I did it again. I get, it's because the, 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 the contrast color is in, is in all singles and I just get on a roll. Yeah, thanks Artsog. I just spotted it. I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it. But thanks for letting me know. just trying to what it is I'm trying to rush because I want that fourth roll and I feel guilty doing the roll before the row ends although that's always an option is if you know we just get that last roll in If I don't make it to the end of the flamingo before the timer is up. It just feels like cheating a little. It's not. Um, the answer that uh, I just keep being interrupted. I think this is straight through no breaks. Okay. We'll get there. So am I the only one who ever does that? Do you guys ever do that? Where you like get in a roll and then realise, oh man, I've been doing the wrong stitch this whole time. And just have to just frog it back and fix it up and then keep going. I do notice that whenever I make a beanie, for some reason I always trash the 2x2 the two two rib a little. And it's just normally in one spot and it's normally two stitches that I kind of get around the wrong way. And it's normally two rows in a row. It's nearly like it's my little signature on the hats that I make. Cause, and then I'm like, I'm leaving those. No one will notice. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Bianca does that. Yeah. Thank you, Bianca. At least I know I'm not alone. The other week I went to go to one place and realized I was driving in the totally wrong direction because my brain was thinking about like, oh yeah, last time we went to this other place. Oh no, Sally, that's even worse when you frog it out and realize, oh no, that was right. And just have to do it all over again exactly the same way that you frogged it out. I don't know which one's worse. Actually, I think that's worse. Pulling it out, only to realize you had it right and you've got to just put it back in again. So, yeah, I think that might be worse. It 
of the pancake section of the ball is kind of like I've left it in its like yarn band but it's kind of like you could fit your whole hand in there in the gap <laughs> I have to move it back to where it was because I need the be able to pull it out. Sorry, I was trying to make it good, trying to make it so that you could see it better, but it was just made it really hard to work from. You're working hard on your projects. I've run along a granny square while forgetting to put in the chain stitches. For nearly, oh no, for nearly a whole round. Oh gosh, did you go back or did you just kind of, you know, jimmy it up the next round? I would have had to go back, I would have had to pull it out. I did actually fall asleep with my hook in my hand, then did one of those jump moves that jolt you awake, scared myself and Stuart. <laughs> Uh, I remember many years ago, <clears throat> Abby gave me like a week's notice that she wanted me to knit a shawl for one of her teachers for Christmas. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I knit a Citron Grand in Malabrigo lace weight in six days. And I realized I was falling asleep knitting, except my fingers were still moving so I had to like keep double checking stitches and I was doing it right luckily it was a very simple pattern just a lot of work but Tim was just like I swear you're knitting in your sleep it looks like your eyes aren't open and I'm like I don't know if I was awake <laughs> uh, I, twitched, I twitched a lot in my sleep for about a week after it apparently I must have just kept kept working on the project but I got it done and blocked and finished and ready in six days. I think that was my fastest knitting project of like a reasonable size. I swore a lot and frogged. Gosh. Yeah, I, it was weird. It was a very weird situation. But I got it done. That was the important thing. It got finished. G Game Widows has fallen asleep spinning. I've dozed off spinning. Especially on a double treadle. I just get into this. Like when I had my old. Oops. Um, one, two, three, four. I had a spin illusion. And the, the actual treadling motion. Really makes you gently rock from side to side. And it was very, very relaxing. But I do find spinning in general very relaxing. So, yeah, there's that. I'm thinking about attending one of the local guild spinning retreats this year. I haven't done one in a long time. I don't know. I haven't decided. I got a phone call from someone saying, you should come to ours, it's coming up. I just don't know. I never sleep well at them. And then I'm shattered for like days afterwards. But I always have a really good time while I'm there. We're getting close to the end. Where are we up to time? Can we do it? Can we get to the end of this and do a dice roll in five minutes? I think we can. I think we can. Do you have a dream yarn that you've never used, that you've heard all amazing things about, 
and would love to try. Um, I've known of applying my spinning late at night on my e-spinner. Yeah, I can imagine that would happen. I tend to zone out while I'm spinning. I have a, a woolly winder on my Margecraft Susie worth every penny. Yeah, I've looked at them and then I'm like, my only issue is I own a lot of bobbins. So I would feel like my bobbins are, are useless now and I have this massive collection of bobbins. Hand spun merino is something you want to try. And you've never tried it? Like, do you want to try your own hand spun merino or somebody else's hand spun merino? I've actually realized I don't spin that much merino anymore. I tend to use a lot of Castle Dale when I do spin. Not that I've spun much lately. Um, I love long color change yarn. I would love to try the, the sheepies. The skippies. Oh, I don't know how to say it. You guys will know the one. I've got one of their whirls. And it's lovely and soft, but the colors are joined with little knots. And everyone's like, oh, it's no biggie. They've been designed to work over blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, but my brain can't get past the fact that it's not. And I normally cut knots out and do my own joins. Ah, oh, spin it myself, dye it myself, knit it myself. Yeah, that's a nice feeling when you've done that. When you just, you're like, yep, I did the lot. Oops, that's one too many of those. I've got a, a red cowl somewhere. And it was, I dyed all the fibers. Like it was a blend of angora and mohair and silk. And no, not mohair, angora, merino, and silk. I dyed them all with pillar box red food coloring, blended them together with hand combs, and then, um, was it hand combs or a drum card? I think it was hand combs. And then I spun it up and made my cowl. So that was so much fun. So see how we've got the two rows of purple, but they're, 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 staggered that feels good to me that feels good to me let's get this last dice roll in okay it's dice roll, dice roll. Dice roll. time roll the dice to choose the next color oh here we go last roll for today it's dice roll, dice roll. Dice roll. Dice roll. time dice roll the again. dice to choose the next color It's a two. Morpho. Bring on the morpho. It's it's another one with a bit of yarn buff. Let's do it. Not too much though. So we'll get that one started and we'll write that down. All the low numbers today. All the low numbers. Um, I was gifted some very appreciated goodies bag from a retreat. Ah, oh, Chantelle's own retreat. I'm thinking I'd like to use it for a knit project. Maybe not my first project. Ah, oh, yeah. So if you're talking about the um, the mohair that, that I put in those bags, I probably wouldn't use that for your first knit project. I'm so glad it's not a three. <laughs> Just a relief. Like, I don't care if it was an eight. As long as it wasn't a three. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh everyone's like I feel so bad for the three um, it was like the audio recognised you saying it wouldn't that be cool I mean that would be pretty cool having everything voice controlled 
that would be pretty nifty. That's the advantage of having a remote producer. Because it basically is voice controlled. You say something and they press a button. You say something else, you press a different button. Um, which is a job I do for other people as a remote producer. I, I'm their button masher. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, I don't know if there's any AI out there yet doing that. I wouldn't be surprised if it's on the way, honestly. I mean, we've got the, um, the, the home pod things, which I don't want to say their name that begins with a G because I've got one right here that just goes off. Um, they, they, they're pretty, they're pretty active. And my one turns off and on all my lights, my studio and stuff like that. So, you know, doing something helpful and useful. Um, oh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened. I think I accidentally double tapped the button, but I don't know why it didn't bring the graphic up a second time. Dying to try Wendy's new double combed castle doll. Yeah, I've seen that, but I, I just haven't touched it yet. You you can bet your bottom dollar she'll have some at Bendigo. Because, you know, a lot of the suppliers and, and creators try to get good new stocks for Bendigo to have something new to. Don't even kid about that, Sally. Don't even kid. Jeez. Far out. Stress me out. All right. I just want to want to get through this little bit here, and then that's the end of the yarn bath on the morpho thing. I'm not going to say it because it turns its little light on and listens. Um, oh no, Francis! Just spent the last twenty minutes plying my art yarn coils in the wrong direction oh no is it can you go back and fix it or is it a bin and start again i really want more of wendy's duchess oh yes that's amazing stuff as well that's her castledale blended with just a little bit of silk it's so so good it's so good Um, you kid never. <laughs> oh my gosh. Worst friend ever. Setting off all the devices in my house. I just had a bit more of the insides of the morpho pop out in a little lump. So that's awesome. Not... Uh, it's hilarious when mine goes off when watching Korean shows on Netflix. They haven't said anything like that. Oh, maybe, but yeah, it's bizarre. It's bizarre what sets it off. I made the mistake of setting up my new phone in the lounge room. And it gets you to run through some prompts when you're setting up your phone. So it can be, you know, and it can respond when it needs to. Well, I had like, because we have quite a few devices because, I mean, we have um, Google Nest, which is the Google Wi-Fi. And that's that's phenomenal. That was, I wish I had done that years earlier. Um, but that means that there's like extra nodes around that also have speakers and respond. So between that and our little, um, you know, the little dot ones those we've got we've got quite a few and tim and abby had bought me one with the screen on it for in the kitchen so i can have like the news on or whatever while i'm cooking dinner um or just you know star wars whatever i feel like on while i'm cooking on my own little kitchen screen i'd never had one a kitchen screen before like i know some people you know back in the 80s used to have a little tv in their kitchens I, we never did that so it was it's kind of cool i like it um 
Lately, you don't need to say that thing. It replies random info like, I don't know if I can find it. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's like, sorry, you need more information. I'm like, I was not even talking to you, you little eavesdropper. My watch sets off when using my KitchenAid. Oh, really? That's so funny. It really is. Alrighty, we got to the end of the yarn buff. We are now in the ball. Fingers across that it's just the ball. But guys, it is it is well done time wise. I have had so much fun. Again, I always have fun with you guys. Like really, I can't complain. Louis still asleep, but the second I move, he'll follow me. He'll come with. Um. So what I'll do is I'll finish this off. I'll finish off the morpho row. I'll get our photos. They'll go on Instagram later today. Um. Thank you again so much for joining me on this journey with this blanket. We are having a bit of fun with it. Now, if you guys get bored, I need you to tell me, okay? I need you to tell me that you're over it with the with this project and you need a little break because I can intermix like what I used to do with the queen. I can break it up a little bit. But right now I want to keep working on it. So I'm happy to keep going. Um I am planning some extra videos to come up as well. So it'll be like, maybe that will be the little break in the, the, the little, you know, change up is it, is the extra videos. So nothing dramatic, nothing big, but just something. Um, and, um, and yeah, and I'll see those of you that I see tonight at Caffeinated Crafters and I'll see everybody else next week. So see you later. Bye now.